Hello oh, everyone, welcome back to Down Periscope, Up Periscope. I'm Tim, one of the tour guides. Have you ever wondered what it's like to sleep on a submarine? Well, this is what it would be like. Yeah, this is the life for the average enlisted sailor on board this submarine. This is what's known as a coffin rack. Yeah, so this is pretty much your home away from home for a couple of months when the submarine is out at sea. Now, to give you an idea of, of the dimensions of this space, each of these racks, we've got 66 of them. They're six feet, two inches long, two feet wide. There's about a foot and a half of clearance here between them. If you do the measurements, that's roughly 18 and a half cubic feet of space to call your bedroom for that time. Now, in reality, you don't actually have that amount of space. Like your reading light here, which you can turn off or on, <laughs> takes up a little bit of space. There's some foot lockers at your feet that take up a little bit of space, so you don't actually have like, you know, the full 18 and a half cubic feet of space to sleep in, but this is your bedroom. So as you can see, now I'm just skinny enough where I can turn over on these things, but anyone with broader shoulders than me, not happening very much. You may also be wondering, well, what if you're taller than six foot two? Well, then you do this. Yep, that's how you sleep. Now, of course, there would have been some blue curtains here that you can shut for privacy. And, you know, you'd have your uh, blankets and pillows here. So it was not nearly as Spartan as it looks right now. It's simply, we just don't have those stuff on board the submarine right now. But this is your uh, lap of luxury here for several months when the submarine is on patrol. Yep. Now... Ugh. Each of these racks opens up like this one here to reveal a four inch deep storage space beneath them. This is known as a coffin locker. This is pretty much all the space you would have to store your various personal items for the patrol. And if you happen to be sharing your bunk that is hot racking, well, then you're going to share this space as well. The way the average uh, daily cycle works on a submarine is when Blueback was in operation, submarines were operating on an 18-hour day, broken up into three six-hour watches. So every six hours, one-third of the crew comes down here to get some sleep. The new guys get to share. So it works out to something like uh, three men for every two racks. So you may go to your bunk, wake up the guy in it, and you're going to switch spots with him. So the bed is still warm from the other man's body heat. That's hot racking. And to my understanding... Submarines, at least attack submarines, still use that practice. There's simply not enough space for everyone. They're not really making them with more beds. Right through here, we have slightly nicer accommodations for the senior enlisted men. This is the GOAT locker, the chief petty officer's quarters. It's not terribly, you know, fancy or, or anything, right? Same space for your racks and all that. Same thing, but some nicer things. Maybe they have a coffee pot, they got a nice table here, and all that. So, slightly nicer spaces. So, junior enlisted men would not be allowed in the goat locker here unless they had permission. So, there's that. And we got one of our guys sleeping there. That, we call that guy the bear. Alright. So, yes. These racks here are what you would sleep in. Now, in comparison, this is pretty subpar unless you're an officer because, as we say, rank has its privileges. Let's go up to officer country and see what tho where those guys slept, in particular one of them, the captain. Alright, now in contrast to the crew's quarters and enlisted berthing, officer's country up here is positively high rent, luxurious. In particular, this stateroom, because this is the CO's, or the captain's stateroom. For one thing, he actually does have the biggest one. It's roughly the size of a small walk-in closet here. And the captain's biggest flex, arguably, is that he's got the nicest bed. It is actually bigger than the rest. It's about six foot five by uh, two feet nine inches but more importantly this is the only built-in rack on the submarine that you can sit up in and not smack your head against anything so i'm telling you he has some nice perks and we're pretty much done with the perks of being the captain now so 
this is actually nice. Yep, he's got a small sink here. He has a closet. He can hang some of his uniforms up in there. Has a writing desk here so he can do his paperwork and all that stuff. Also notice that this is the one stateroom that is in fact closest to the door that leads to the control room. Now reportedly, a former uh, skipper of Blueback actually had his CO stateroom moved back aft to one of the other staterooms, probably the XO stateroom. So the XO was flip-flopped between here and the captain slept back in the XO's room. And from my understanding, they basically moved the racks and all the stuff in here back there. So for whatever reason, that's just what he wanted. He didn't want to be this close to the, to the control room. Now, the primary purpose of the CO stateroom being right here is because it is the closest to the control room. If he is needed for some emergency or whatever, he quickly just runs out here down that passageway into the, into the control room. But yeah, this is the swankiest part of the submarine, arguably. So nice place. I have no idea who this uh, Commander Taylor is. Um, we have a list of all the former uh, COs of Blueback, and Commander Taylor is not one of them, so I don't know. A lot of people ask what this Rose stands for. It's because Portland is the Rose City, one of its many nicknames. So it's, uh, it's not because the captain died or anything. It's because it's, we're in the Rose City. So there's that. We have some other pictures of the submarine. I think that's one where she's going down the Columbia right there. These are actually the various crests of the different, the three different barbell submarines. We've got barbell there, blueback, and bonefish right over there. A nice little painting of blueback. I think that's in Pearl, or it might be San Diego. And I think that one is off San Francisco. Yeah, that's the. Yeah, that's the San Francisco skyline there. Got a nice little uh, waterline model of Blueback there. And we also have a little model of the uh, Soviet Typhoon class. She's, uh, yeah, she's missing a bow plane on the uh, starboard side there, but pay no mind to that. Captain also has some other nice things. He has direct communication with via the sound-powered telephone. Other things, like a squawk box here, right? for the 27MC. Various other clocks and repeaters. Make sure he knows where we are and where we're going. So that's a little bit about the captain's stateroom in comparison to enlisted berthing. Now technically there is one other officer who might have his very own stateroom all to himself, but the captain has guaranteed privacy. And that's technically the XO stateroom right behind this one on the starboard side of the vessel. That being said, there were not always eight officers on Blueback, there could have been more. So, you know, they're just gonna pack them in wherever they have. So the CO, or the XO might be sharing his stateroom with someone, such as a visiting dignitary, an admiral, even the president of the United States. There is technically two bunks in the XO stateroom. One of them folds down from the overhead. And so he gets to share if there's extra people on board. So these stairs here is what used to be a three-man junior officer's stateroom. So just imagine, right, there's officers stacked three high in here. Back there is another stateroom uh, just beyond that wall there. And over there on the starboard side at the very aft end of this space is the one shower and one head that is a toilet uh, and washroom for the officers. Again, just for some comparison, 